It's Thursday and you're watching Freight Waves Now. I'm your host Anthony Smith and coming up we're going to have Andrew Cox with a shipper update. But first we're going to go to Donnie Gilbert with the carry update brought to you by Parfleet with a special guest. Stay tuned. Good morning everybody. Uh, here I'm bringing you, my name is Donnie Gilbert, bringing the carry update sponsored by Powerfleet. I'm going to bring a special guest on this morning, Nick Austin, our chief meteorologist. I have a few markets on the west coast that I'm kind of concerned about, so we're going to jump in first and look at some weather events that are going on right now. Nick, what is going on? Let us know. I bet you're probably thinking about Salt Lake City and the Denver markets I out am. west. Yeah. And those are some big markets for, they you know, are. That they supply a lot of these areas, of course, through Montana and Wyoming. So what's going on in Denver and Salt Lake? Not much right now, but that will change uh, gradually through the day today, but lasting into tomorrow night, we're going to see a lot of heavy snow developing in uh, a lot of the high elevations, um, including along I-70 west of Denver, like the Eisenhower uh, Tunnel area, think places like that. So, so we have snow coming in. It's going to be yeah. coming in today, but it's going to be lasting till when? Lasting probably until around around sundown tomorrow on Friday, sun, so, or maybe it, a little bit after and that. And that's yeah. my concern because right. tomorrow is Friday. So if yeah. you're a carrier, you know this is this is an, an issue that you really need to keep an eye on. If you're running a truck into Denver right now, most of your um, loads are coming from long hauls to these two markets. So right. if you're running in the Denver right now and you get there and you get delayed and it's a Friday, it could be all the way to Monday right now until you get unloaded because they might That's be right. closed on, on Saturday or Sunday. So carriers need to watch out. If you're headed into the Denver market, then you might want to make some preparation. You might want to be sure and call your shipper, call your receivers, call your shippers, make sure that you know everybody's open or going to be open and make sure that you're able to get in there or maybe a secondary option if you get into Denver and can drop your load because it's weather that's coming in. And Nick, an added note real quick though, before you say goodbye to me. The cities of Denver and Salt Lake City, not a ton of snow in the next two days. It's going to be in those surrounding areas, some of those high elevations along I-70. So that's what you have to watch out for. So strong I and strong I winds too. coming in. And I heard right, there's going to be right. 18 to 36 inches in some of the passes uh, outside of Denver as well. Yes. Vail Pass. Some areas of I-70 coming in, but also west of Denver, heading west of Denver along I-70. That's where a lot of the worst conditions are going to be, and just to the north too. All right. Yeah. Nick, I appreciate your update. You bet. And we'll see you next time. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and jump into what's going on with our volumes currently right now. So looking at our volumes for, you know, this is our national average volumes. We see that we're currently at 95.81. We like to see it around 10,000, uh, but so we're about almost about 400, 425 points below that. So as we look at the line here, we see where I'm comparing it to last year. The blue is 2000, or 2020, and the green line is 2019. And as we look at it, you see it's kind of up, kind of down. They're crisscrossing each other on whether uh, today's higher or tomorrow's higher or 2019. But one thing we have to keep in mind here when we're looking at this chart is, is yesterday was February 5th, and it was a Wednesday. But in 2019, the Wednesday was February 6th. So this blue line when we're comparing is actually about a day behind. So if we pull this blue line forward one day, these trends are actually going to line up and be very, very similar, very close. So what we're seeing right now for 2018 is actually uh, our 2020 volumes are right in line with what's going on in 2019. So this is something I look at to prepare yourself for what's to come. Is kind of use your uh, 2019 volumes through February as a good prediction of what's going on, what's going to happen for the February of 2020. Jumping right into tender rejection rates, it's still the same situation that we've seen going on in the past few days. We see here in red is our reefer tender rejection volumes, and they're still going down. They're, they're, it's slowly going down, but we're still at 12.28%. 12.28% is still a very uh, healthy tender rejection rate. Uh, it has our spot market rates on average well above our contracted rates, but the rates are trending in a downward pattern. Uh, dry van, dry van's down here in blue. We are down to 4.91%. Uh, this is a very low tender rejection rate. We'd like to see it a lot higher, but as we close, you know, close in on the 4% mark, uh, are basically right now our spot market rates are averaging uh, very kind of right in there with our contracted rates. So nothing special going on with our dry vans. But then again, we are in February. It is first quarter, so. January and February are very tough months to roll through uh, as we start getting into maybe mid-March, which hopefully start seeing these turn back around. 
pulling up here on a U.S. map, these are our dry van tender rejection rates. We see here through the northeast, through the southeast, uh, we, we'll skip over Alabama for right now, but a lot of uh, lightly shaded uh, areas because tender rejection rates are averaging so low. We do have a bump up here in Alabama in the mobile market. We've seen a lot of our port cities uh, picking up volumes this year. Our volumes are here in the shade. So we see the Atlanta market here, some markets in New York and Ohio. Indiana and Chicago. These, all these markets have a lot of volumes, but you see they're very lightly shaded. So that is because our tender rejection rates are so low. The strong point is kind of the western part of the Midwest markets out in Iowa. You'll see some stronger markets there where capacity is a lot tighter. But down through the southwest and even all across the west coast, a lot of lightly shaded colors because the market is so soft right now. Salt Lake City is poking up there. You got a lot of volumes in Salt Lake City and Denver as well. And those are the two markets we were just discussing that we have some inclement weather running into, so carriers need to be careful when they're dealing with these markets for the next few days. Jumping over to our reaper volumes, we see Salt Lake City jump up along with Washington and some Oregon or uh, Idaho and uh, Washington markets here. These are very strong markets for our uh, reefer carriers right now and again the west coast and a lot through the southwest you see a lot of very light colors because uh, the tender rejection rates for reefers are very very low especially in California so we have a few hot spots we have Arkansas markets and Memphis jumping up right now and of course Atlanta has a lot of volumes for reefer but again a lightly shaded market so reefer have a few hot spots that's really keeping those tender rejection rates elevated <clears throat> but the rest of the U.S. is very, very weak when it comes to our markets right now. <clears throat> and that right there should wrap it up today for our carrier update. Thank you. The comprehensive logistics offerings from PowerFleet cover in-cab ELD, fleet management, trailer tracking, cargo monitoring, and tracking other assets such as chassis and intermodal containers. Power up your operations with PowerFleet. Voices from every corner of the supply chain concerning all modes of transportation. From the world's largest logistics podcast network, this is what the freight tech revolution sounds like. Freightcast presented by FreightWaves. Subscribe now wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome to Shipper Update. I'm here with Andrew Cox. Andrew, what do you have for us today? Anthony, today I have the uh, Institute of Supply Management Purchasing Managers Inde Index. So this is a, you know, this is an index that gauges uh, manufacturing production and manu a lot of uh, components that, that go into manufacturing across the U.S. Uh, so this is one of those diffusion indexes in which 50 is kind of the the, the equilibrium point where there's neither contraction nor uh, expansion. Uh, anything above 50 would be expanding. Anything below uh, is of course contracting. And this number right here at 50.9 is the first time that we've been above that 50 uh, threshold since July 2019. Uh, so this is a good sign uh, off of a bad year in 2019 uh, for manufacturing. Right. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is a good sign for the economy moving forward. So off to a strong start in 2020, I think, as you mentioned, first rise in about over five, five months or so, right? So right. this reading of 50.9, indicative of expansion, it's above that 50 threshold. This was somewhat unexpected, right? Uh, kind of, yeah. I mean, we, we've written in the last couple of weeks uh, in the Freight Intel group that we were kind of sensing a bottoming uh, in the industrial and manufacturing economy, but we really didn't have any, any data to back it up. This is the first data we've had to back it up. Mm -hmm. uh, but. It may not last long uh, because of the coronavirus. It's kind of it's already threatening, has threatened, and put some impacts on the Chinese economy. Uh, them being our biggest trade partner, it's it's likely to eventually kind of have some collateral effect on us. Uh, so it may not last through the next month, but right. you know this could be the first sign of a bottoming, uh, although it may not last. Right, right, and so. I, that's one of the things, right? There's a lot of headwinds, and, and as you mentioned, this is a diffusion index, so it's, it's off of survey data. It has close correlations with industrial production, one of the tangible results, or one of the tangible indexes that the Federal Reserve puts out. And so when we're tracking these two, they, they go pretty closely, and so Correct. that pop-up is nice to see, but that those respondents, I think they had a lot of feedback in the survey. I think I, I saw a few that said they were still concerned over some of the slow 
different conditions in manufacturing. So it seems like it's a, it's a really good sign, but maybe we're not out the woods just yet. Yeah, I actually, we, we broke down a couple of the uh, the components here. So the PMI is, is the overall, and then we have new orders, production, employment, uh, prices they pay, new exports, and, uh, and imports. So uh, of the five that we selected, there's 10 total components. Of the five we selected, the only one that's still in contraction is, is employment. Uh, and this is in part due to the labor shortage right now, the right. unemployment rate being so low. Um, and I think that some of these manufacturers have been reluctant to expand in this, in this environment because 2019 was so bad for yeah. them, uh, it was brutal. Um, but that may change in the, in the coming months because of production. I mean, you see production jump nearly 10 percentage points. Uh, so they're starting to produce again, and this is uh, in part because of the trade deals with China and the new USMCA. Right. Uh, so there, there are there were mixed results um, in in the survey. Uh, there were a lot of people that said they still have some some worries about global trade, but they did feel that they were more pop more optimistic for the next six months about it uh, than they had been for the previous six months. So gotcha. I do think that. Um, sentiment is beginning to churn, uh, but yes, yeah, still timid. Got you. And, and, and as you mentioned, sentiment is starting to turn. And, and when we're looking at the PMI, I think it's a forward-looking indicator, right? So maybe we can start to expect to see some of these tangible results coming online, perhaps late uh, second quarter, early third quarter? Yeah, I think so. You look at these new orders jumping uh, back into, into growth territory, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that one of the only other two of the 10 that were negative were uh, inventories and order of backlogs, so uh, we would like to see that backlog order kind of kind of grow a little bit, right. which you know could come off these new orders. Uh, so yeah, this, this isn't going to change anything overnight, uh, but we continue this trend upwards. We think that back in, yes, in a few months, six months or so, uh, we do have a kind of a belting up of the of the manufacturing and industrial economy. Got you. And so a lot of, I think, uh, relief for probably some potential flatbed uh, carriers and operators out there. Um, a lot of those heavy-duty goods uh, are going to go on those type of trailer types. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is a, this is a direct positive for anybody that's manufacturing uh, an industrial economy, uh, but it's indirectly good for everyone else. Uh, right, this right. Is, you know, this is one of those leading leading economic indicators uh, that kind of gives a, another positive into the U.S. economy that, that we can continue this run even another year or, or more years forward. So, yeah, for flatbed carriers and for all the shippers creating these goods, uh, this is very good news. Excellent. Andrew, thank you so much for that insight. Thanks, sir. And thank you so much for tuning in. That's going to do it for this shipper update and this episode of Freight Waves Now. The fun doesn't stop here. We're always streaming around the clock on all your favorite social media platforms, so check us out there. And check out our Freight Waves TV app for on all your favorite social media and streaming platforms, including Apple TV. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next episode. Is the trade war back on? Trade war. Trade war. Full blown trade war. Fifteen percent tariffs on 112 billion dollars worth of goods. Hours earlier, China announced tariffs of five and ten percent on U.S. products.